This is Congregation Mikva Israel's um, oral history project. It's a Georgia diversity project. And we have a subject with us today. And would you please um, state your name? I'm Marion Abrams Levy Mandel. Okay. And today's date, for the record, is Thursday, August the 19th, 2010. And um, we are interviewing Marion today because she is connected um, with Georgia history, specifically Georgia history as it pertains to Congregation Mikvah Israel. Um, our interviewer today is Jane Kahn. Would you please introduce yourself? I'm Jane Guthman Kahn. Okay, and um, would you begin? Marion, I'm just going to start with the first question, and I want you to tell us a little bit about your family history that makes you quite unique in this community. You make me sound like a prehistoric animal, <laughs> and sometimes I feel that way. Um, I am descended from Benjamin Sheftel, who was one of the original 41 who settled, came from London and settled in Savannah in July of 1733. I, I am descended through my father's family, Edmund Abrams. Edmund H. Abrams was the son of uh, the daughter of um, Perla Shaftel later Solomon, and her father was Dr. Moses Schachtel, who was a grandson of the original Benjamin. That is the way I trace my descent. And we, our family has lived in Savannah ever since 1733, which I think is somewhat of a record. How long did it take you to get all this straight in your mind, or is this something you just grew up with? Well, if my father had had his way, I would have grown up with it. But unfortunately, like so many children, I didn't have any time for history, family, or otherwise. So I didn't really pay very, atten very much attention to it when I was growing up. He used to go into his den almost every evening after dinner, after supper, we called it then, um, and take out old papers from the desk, which I have here in the in the next room. And he had a lot of old papers in there, and he would go through them, he would unfold them, and he would then fold them back. And he tried his best to get me to pay some attention and get interested in the family history, but I didn't take it. <laughs> it didn't take to me, anyway. Was this a, a lifelong um, hobby or avocation of his, or yes. did he come to it late in his life? Uh, well, I, I can remember it from the time I can remember, but I never, I never really paid any attention to it. Your father was uh, a lawyer, as I recall, and... Um, I guess, was he an amateur historian, or was he just a Sheffield family historian? Uh, he was an amateur historian. He, he um, later in his life, after he had the time when he retired, especially, but even before he retired, he delved into um, many aspects of people in Savannah who were connected with... Um, with the family, the Sheftel family, or, or in other in other ways, and he wrote mono, uh, monographs that were published in the Georgia Historical Quarterly, and uh, we traveled to specific destinations so that he could do his research on these subjects. I had a lot of good trips on account of his interest in history. Well, that continued on to your generation through your husband as well. Is that not true? Yes. Yes, it did indeed. And I suppose I was thinking more of my husband when I was talking in the previous 
in, in answer to the previous question. But my father did did do writing, and he didn't live as long as he should have. So he didn't have time to retire and do the research necessary for it. Well, I know that you've gotten very much involved, well, you've been very much involved through the years in the Congregation of for Israel. Um, what are you doing to foster that for the future generations that are coming up in this community? Well, I'm doing things like this, I suppose, this interview, but um, I, for a number of years, I guess seven or eight at least, I've been doseting at our um, tours that we give at Congregation Make Israel, and I've enjoyed that every Wednesday afternoon, and I've met some, some very interesting people who have been in, interested enough in our, in our history to make the tour. And um, that tour is a pretty ambitious project, as I understand. How long does it take you, say, if I wanted to take the docent tour, what would that involve? It would be about 40 or 45 minutes if you took the complete tour of the sanctuary and the museum, which is really uh, interesting. And you lead the tourists through this, the, the entire sanctuary and up to the museum? We have an audio that we um, use in the sanctuary, and we supplement the recorded information with tailored um, information that each docent can contribute and if there is interest and, and if there are questions from the tourists who come through. Do you let them know of your lineage when they come here? Are you introduced as Marion Mendel, who's a descendant of the original settlers? No, I don't mention it unless they happen specifically to ask if there are any descendants still uh, in the community, and then I, I do fess up. <laughs> Marion, I don't know whether this is appropriate or not, but how old are you? I'm in my 94th year now. And you're still leading docent tours, and you're still participating in interviews and, um, his, and, and imparting all your personal knowledge to those that well, to a limited extent now. I, I'm not dosing regularly. I'm a, a substitute now. But um, if called upon, I, I can still dose. And your children, your adult children, have become also very much involved in congregation. Yes, in Israel. they have. They both live here? Yeah, I'm very fortunate in that respect. They live here. I don't know about where my grandchildren are going to end up, but... I guess you can't control that. <laughs> um, well, have, have they shown an interest, your children and your grandchildren, in perpetuating the, the, the story of the Shuffle family? And uh, I'm not sure that I can say uh, definitely that they have shown much interest, that they're all involved in their own lives, just like I was, I guess, and they haven't really paid too much attention. Um, well, how has having this huge, has, has this been a burden to you to have this, go back to 1733, has, how has it affected you personally in your life? Well, it, it hasn't really affected me in a great way, except probably recently as I've grown older. Uh, when I was growing up, the only way I can think of that I was affected was because of my lineage, um, I became a member of what was then well, I don't know, I think it's been re revived. Um, a chapter of the Children of the American Revolution. And um, it flourished for a while, then it died down. I think it's been resuscitated in the last few years. And I had to go to a lot of stuffy meetings and um, 
I felt I felt compelled to do it because it meant a great deal to my father, but I was not particularly interested. And I couldn't couldn't tell you who were members then or anything. I'm sure there are still people walking around Savannah who were members, but I don't remember them. And also, one time, well, specifically in in uh, 1933, when Savannah was uh, celebrating its 200th anniversary, there was quite a celebration for that anniversary and I was selected to represent the, I guess, the Jewish settlers. And I had to march in a parade. I don't remember where the parade started, but we ended up at, Gra at Grayson Stadium and we were all in costume. I'm sure there were other people from our congregation who were in the group that marched. But I can remember I marched down Victory Drive and into Grayson Stadium and FDR, Franklin Roosevelt, was the main speaker. Oh, that was a five mile, at least a five mile march from I the congregation I of Israel. We, I don't think we started downtown. I think we must have joined the the group, because I think I'd have remembered marching and that far. Now, this wasn't as a member of the Children of the American Revolution, no, no, because no. You pre your family predated the American Revolution. Yeah. 